Okay, well, uh, tone down the music. So we'll roll that off. Okay, so we'll roll that off. Okay, so we'll Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm David Enke, and um, I built a lot of the musical instruments in here. Um, uh, my wife Annie does a lot of the sculptures, and so we're both woodworkers uh, from La Vida, Colorado. And um, it's an honor to be here. Uh, Annie won first place in the Colorado State Fair for one of her sculptures, and so uh, the uh, museum here invited her to uh, exhibit and, uh, and then saw what I was doing, and I, I collaborate on a lot of her stuff. I mill a lot of the wood and do things like that. So uh, uh, they invited us to do a joint show, and that's basically how this originated. And um, that was a couple years ago. Uh, that this has been in the planning. And so uh, the show's up until um, July 13th. Tonight uh, we're going to feature this instrument here, which um, uh, I refer to as a wall harp, for lack of any better term for it. Uh, I had no idea that this was going to happen until we got invited to come into the room and we walked in here and we said, oh my gosh, well this is a big room, how are we going to fill this space? And uh, Crystal probably remembers this and, uh, and, and I said, well look at this wall, I can build an instrument on the wall. And this was about a year ago, we we're looking in here and, and I have no idea. Um, and that was the beginning of a, of a big adventure of discovering what was what was going, this going to be and uh, the process of evolution that it went through to end up where it is now uh, was rather fascinating to me because I had no idea. It, I, I didn't have any models to go off of and I didn't have a wall harp manual. <laughs> you know, I, I, I looked in Wikipedia and I didn't find any wall harps and I googled it and there wasn't anything and it was like well, I didn't know what to do. Um, but I knew that I had this giant space and that, that I could put strings on it. Somehow we could figure out how to attach strings and, and turn this into something. Um, and I was, I was quite fascinated by the possibilities uh, in itself. And um, one, of the, one of the reasons for this fascination is I have a, an electronics business um, where uh, we build sensors for musical instruments and a lot of other things, but these, they we're basically using aerospace technology to pick up vibrations. And so they're used in a lot of applications that aren't in music. We, they're in uh, uh, telescope turnstiles. Um, and they've got our sensors in there so that when the, when the big giant, uh, one of them's on the, the, the top of the mountain in Hawaii, and then when it's turning around, and this is a giant building turning around, right? And so it's turning around and they've got our sensors in there, and if there's any little dust or something gets in the bearings, it goes crunch, 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 and the little sensor picks it up. And, uh, and then they stop it and then they clean it, and otherwise it would destroy the bearings. And so uh, there's things like that, but we, we end up working with a lot of holistic healers, and there's people that are using this technology in the healing arts. So, as a result of the, the uh, um, uh, pickup business, which is what they're called, their pickups for musical instruments, we know all of these uh, uh, holistic healers. Which, and they work with frequencies, and they're playing with frequencies all the time. And one of them uh, builds these, uh, these tables that you put a patient on, and um, and then he sits under the table and he plays these big long strings and they start vibrating and uh, creating vibrations and he heals the, the patient that way and they can treat all sorts of things. And, and so I thought, well, this is kind of interesting. So I still don't know what I'm gonna do with the wall. Anyway, so I decide, okay, this is good. When um, 
it came in in little pieces, little pieces, little pieces. And what had happened um, about eight years ago, one of the places where I buy guitar parts and things, uh, he says, oh, you know, I've got a special deal on some guitar tuners, but you have to buy a lot of them. And, um, but I'll give you a really special deal if you buy like all of them. And, um, and I'm like, well, what are we talking about here? And uh, I didn't have any money or anything, but he gave me such a good deal. So we spent all my last money and my wife is like, what are you doing, you're crazy. And um, so I bought, A lot of them. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got like 500 of them, and I figured, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll put them on some sticks, and we'll do a little kids' workshop. We'll build some ukuleles with them or something out of some two by fours or something, and, and it'll be fun. We'll use them sometime because she's like, well, what are you doing? Why do you, why, what do you have these? And, you know, like I don't know, you know. But anyway, I had a whole bunch of them. That was eight years ago, and they just sat there, and sat there. And then uh, down in La Vida, they do this Celtic festival, this Celtic music festival, which is really world-renowned. It's, it's very, very good, the people that they bring in. And so uh, Annie was like, gosh, you know, this year I'm really going to just buckle down and I want to learn to play the bowron, which is the Irish, you know, frame drums that they do when they're jigging and clogging and doing all of that stuff. And um, so I said, oh, okay, you know what? I'll get her a bowron for her birthday. And this is right before the Celtic Festival. So I said, okay. And so I call, my, I call my guy, and he goes, oh, man, I've got some bow rounds. He goes, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we get them in, and uh, sometimes they get little scratches on them, they get a little rip in the head or something like that. But you work on these things, so you can do that. You know, you can fix something and make it nice, you know. So I'll tell you what. I'll give you a special deal, but you got to buy them all. you got to buy all of these bow rounds. I'm like, well, what are we talking about here? He says, well... No, he's got, I got like 35 bow rounds. <laughs> so I figure, well, this is, this is cool. This isn't so bad. And of course, we're broke and we don't have any money. And um, so I'm like, God, that's too good to pass out because if I, if I just buy all these broken bow rounds and I can sell five of them and pay for all of it, I fix them all up, and give Annie the best one, she'll be happy. And so the semi truck shows up with the Bowerons and they're all shrink wrapped on a pallet and it's like, it's like eight feet tall and eight feet wide and we don't have any money so I write this, this bad COG check at the time. Like, and she's freaking out and everything. I'm like, no, but there's one, your birthday present's in there. And she's, she's like, okay. Um, anyway, you, you'll, you'll get no good marital advice from me. I will, I will, uh, um, but, but she ended up with, she got a good power on out of it, and I got a whole bunch of broken ones. And I, I did fix up a few of them, and we sold them at the Celtic Festival, but most of them actually, we had so many power rounds, we had to rent a storage locker. <laughs> this is five years ago, so we've been sitting, sitting here paying $50 a month to store our power rounds. And um, so here we're now we're now we're up to about a year ago when, when the installation we're thinking about how we're what are we going to do in here, and I'm thinking, huh, maybe I can do something with those power rods. Hmm, this is interesting. So that's where those came from, and they all got modified. And then I realized that I could put these big strings on it, and then it started to develop. And I really had no idea if it was going to work at all until um, literally uh, uh, Fred August and myself we're bolting it onto the wall for the first time. And so at this point we're committed in, uh, I uh, reheaded a bunch of the drums and then put these dowels through and uh, um, did all of that, um, still not going off of anything uh, really, but um, <clears throat> decided to uh, give it a go. And then it was really kind of funny because I, I started realizing that having the resonators spread out over the wall in this huge expanse like that, that you can kind of get this left and right thing going, because like when you listen to music and headphones, how nice that is and everything, and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. That could be, that could be kind of impacting some way to have them, have the, the speakers so far apart that it's like, it's got to do something. And, um, and I still have no idea, you know, but I'm going, well, oh, this is kind of weird because this idea is coming in and I'm supposed to be doing this. And um, I don't know why, but I'm going to do it. Um, and so I started building it on the wall and I realized that this is going to work. 
I did, had no idea how it was going to be tuned. And um, so each one of the resonators um, has eight strings that are divided into, they're divided in half over the bridges, and they've got 16 notes on them. And then there's eight more big strings that go down to the center here. So those are the big low notes, and that's how it, that's how it works. And um, so after that all happened, and I was looking at the drums, and I thought, well, I, I want to do this nice little painting pattern around and make them a little more interesting. And it turns out it's a, it's a, a symbol of, the, of a portal of a lotus. And uh, it was Fred that said that they were portals. And he said, oh, well, that's what it is. He said, it's a portal. Um, and I was like, oh, OK, well, hmm, hmm. This is very strange. This is very strange. And, and at that point, I realized that, that you know, I've been sort of being set up to do this for a long time. And it finally dawned on me as I'm bolting it onto the wall and I'm going, wow, I'm really glad that the universe didn't tell me what it was doing because I wouldn't have been able to go with it. I wouldn't have, I would have you know, uh, disbelieved it and I would have messed it all up. But um, so anyway, once I realized that, that it, it was supposed to be happening, I just relaxed into it and of course it happened. So this is, uh, this is the first evening that, we, that is dedicated to the wall harp. And, um, as far as I know, this installation will be here uh, through the end of the show, and then we have no idea what's going to happen to it. And it could go anywhere, or it could be all disassembled and um, you know, put all the little guitar tuners back in the bag and build some ukuleles out of them or something. But uh, uh, anyway, um, it's a real treat. Uh, we're going to be playing with a, a few different uh, people tonight. Um, it's my good friend Fred August, who uh, has um, been uh, participating in some short performances on the wall harp. And then we also have Michael Wenzel uh, here, who's going to be uh, uh, assisting us. So primarily, we're going to be a trio. Then we're going to have a little audience participation and uh, invite some, some of you all up to uh, play. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's the evening. And um, so we'll get it going here. We're going to start off with. Um, this is the uh, composition in A, written for Wall Harp. So. <laughs>
So Mr. Fred, I guess.
just this is a tree. <laughs> I know it was um, actually this one came from Australia, and the person there did the, the artwork on it as well. And they looked specifically for this type of uh, tree, and they know uh, the ones that have been attacked by termites. And so termites will come up to the bottom, put them ground, and they eat out to the inside of the core in the middle of the tree. And so uh, I don't know how they determine that, but anyway, once they determine what this is, and they realize the tree doesn't have that much height, and so they'll, they'll cut it down, and they let the wood season for a year or two, and then they make uh, this. And all this is is just a hollow piece of wood. That's all it is. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that they um, that they they go around with sticks and they they beat the trees with the sticks to tell if they're ready yet. Oh, yeah. and, then they get, uh, and then the other thing, because the, the it's so hot there, that and then there's lots of lizards and things that like to eat the ants. That they they're really really careful when they're making their you know, their little trails all up inside to not break through the outer. Later, so they'll they'll eat the whole inside of the tree out, but it'll be completely hollow. But they won't even break through the shell because then the lizard can come in, and, you know, and just and just just have at them. Yeah. So they so they, they, they it's really important to be a good ant. You have to make sure you get close to the edge, but you can't go through. And uh, but uh, but yeah, they're fascinating things that lizards can do. And interested how how do you make the sound? You know, as a kid, you go around and go, <laughs> that's all you have to do inside, you go, <laughs> Would y'all like to try that one? <laughs> that's all you do. <laughs> I think I've probably done that. <laughs> At least once or twice. So for the next piece, I'm going to, um, I'm going to compose something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's your song. I should know. Yeah, it's my song. I should know how to do it. Um, okay, so we brought we brought some basic little toys to play with, and, you know, uh, and, and introduce sounds with. And these are some little uh, little hammers that you use on a hammer dulcimer. Which uh, so I'm gonna do something with these.
it's really about suspending the judgmental mind and just opening yourself up to see what happens. And everything that comes out is natural. It's just uh, uh, it's wonderful. So I wait. The only thing I can know about how this is tuned is it's tuned to the uh, the frequency standard of uh, A is 432, 432 hertz, which is supposed to resonate with the with your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's what my woo woo friends call. <laughs> <laughs> and they swear by it. They say that's it. Because you have the you have your woo woo singing bowls and if it's A four forty, they're like, no, it's the corporate standard and you're like, new, 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 we get that singing bowl out of here. Because I can never figure out, you know, because I you know, play different instruments and things, so I got these singing bowls and I'm like, oh, this is great, I can put this on a song. And so I had all my instruments all tuned to A440, and my singing bowl's out of tune. I'm like, what's wrong with this thing? You know, it's like, I could pay like $500. Anyway, let's do the 432, and that's why I did hard to. Um, anyway, so let's, uh, let's, let's play. Uh, just do whatever you want to. Um, there isn't any incorrect way to play this. I mean, I, I, I Googled it, and I said, is there a wrong way to play this? And, and they were like, no, everything's good. You know, it's all good. <laughs> and please, the more the merrier, actually. And uh, and you will be immortalized by film. Yeah, please do. And uh, these these pieces of tape here, these are harmonic points. Well, they're like yeah, they would be at fret positions, and if you put your finger on them, they uh, they make different notes. So, yeah. And these are stepping stools for. Uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that. But, I mean, they're for us. I mean, but all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I benefit from the field a lot, you know. So. And uh but uh yeah. <laughs>